Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a couple revolvers. I've got the Ruger GP100 Match Champion, and I've got the Smith & Wesson 610. They're both chambered in 10 millimeter. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. Both of these are big, heavy, bulky revolvers. Again, as I mentioned, chambered in 10 millimeter. And there's a lot of similarities between them and a few key differences that may influence which one of the two you may want to go with. So they're both unloaded. They both will operate with or without moon clips. And a moon clip will look something like this. Note that the moon clips between the manufacturers are not interchangeable. This is the one that fits the Ruger. The Smith & Wessons are similar, but the spacings are different, so you can't use the moon clips from one and the other. Without moon clips, both of them have a little ridge in there, and they will index off the case of the 10 millimeter, so that you can safely shoot 10 millimeter without a moon clip. But in both of them, the ejector would be useless at that point. There's nothing for it to grab onto, so you have to manually extract the cases. With the moon clip, when you push on it, the, it will push the whole package of moon clip and spent shells, or live shells if you're wanting to exit early. So the moon clips are kind of desirable in these revolvers that shoot the rebate rim cartridges meant for semi-automatics. However, it's nice that if you don't have the moon clips or they've gone AWOL or you've run out of them that you can't use them. Of course, the moon clips are reusable, but they're also easy to lose or easy to accidentally toss down range. And I have actually, they also can bend if you're not careful with them. One thing I did find with the Ruger ones that's a little different than the Smith & Wesson ones is the edges are, are very smooth on these. So when I'm pulling the cartridges off, I can effectively just put my thumb in the middle and grab and pull a cartridge off and not poke or bite my hand. The Smith & Wesson ones tend to be just a little on the sharper side and a little less pleasant to do that with. The Match Champion is basically a match version of the GP100. So it comes from the factory with a tuned trigger, a tuned hammer, polished internals. It's just the way that comes from the factory. They have a boss, a centering boss on the trigger, and they have centering shims on the hammer so that there's no slop in the mechanism, and it ensures a nice smooth trigger pull. They also have a triple lockup, and this is characteristic of all of the Ruger revolvers. They lock at the front, they lock on these notches, and they lock on this pin like any classic revolver. So once the cylinder is closed, you've got perfect timing and perfect alignment every time. The Smith & Wesson is a quality piece, but it locks up in the standard way. It locks up at the back on the pin like any other revolver. So there is more potential for it to get out of alignment, but I haven't had any experience with that in these, and they're not particularly prone to it. So what's going on with the Ruger is probably just a little more sureness of it, but not particularly necessary to be any good. One thing I have noticed, the Ruger... The release you push down and it operates very smoothly every time. doesn't matter what orientation the cylinder is on, you hit it and it comes right out. This one, from the when I first got it, I had a lot of trouble with it. So when I push on this, this time it, it went perfectly smooth. I rotate it and that time it hung up a little bit. And there's one orientation where, there it is, can't, really had to give it a shove to get it out. And I have kind of polished it and tuned it a little bit. I want to be careful because I don't want to mess it up where I get it out of time. But this mechanism is not as smooth on the Smith & Wesson by far as it is on the Ruger. And that was kind of a surprise to me. Because in general, they are, the Smith & Wessons are quality revolvers. The Smith & Wesson comes with this rubber over mold grip. The Ruger comes with this Hogue hardwood grip. Both of them, are, the grips are changeable. So on the Ruger, you pull this screw out and you can swap this grip out with another one. And the uh, Smith & Wesson uses a screw here on the side. So it's just different mechanism, but conceptually the same. And you can swip, swap either of these grips out. 
Rubber grips are kind of popular on more powerful cartridges, 10 millimeters on the more powerful end. But the recoil on these is actually interesting because I felt the recoil more in the Smith & Wesson than I did in the Ruger. And I think it's because of the grip angle. Just the way the grip angles out on the Smith & Wesson is slightly different than it is the, a little more straight on the Match Champion. And I just, I seem to feel the recoil in this less, even though it's got a hardwood grip instead of a padded rubber grip. That's also kind of interesting because the barrels are a different length. The Smith & Wesson is a 4-inch barrel, and the Ruger is a 4.20-inch barrel. And so you'd think, okay, the Ruger is going to be bigger. But when you line them up back to back, when you line up at the back of the grip, the overall length of the gun is the same. It's 9.5 inches. So they're both identical length overall, again, because of that grip angle difference, even though one has a slightly shorter barrel. 10 millimeter does benefit from a longer barrel and velocity, but 0.2 inches isn't going to make a difference that's really going to matter. Despite being dimensionally similar, the Smith & Wesson is actually a heavier revolver at 42.6 versus 37 for the Ruger. So that's even more reason why the felt recoil should have been less on the Smith & Wesson. So that's just kind of a minor nuance. Now, I felt the recoil more, but it, it wasn't anywhere near making a difference. It wasn't uncomfortable, it didn't hurt. So both of these actually feel comfortable to shoot, even with 10 millimeter. And I've also shot the Match Champion in 357 Magnum, and that's also quite a comfortable revolver to shoot. So if you're looking to say, you know, recoil or something like that, it's not gonna make much of a difference. Sights might. So both of these have very similar adjustable rear sights with a white U. The U on the Ruger looks brighter and shinier and easier to see than on the Smith & Wesson, but unfortunately that paint on that U on the Ruger, which is the, the one right here, is kind of in a recess. So when you get in suboptimal lighting, they both end up being about the same. They tend to gray out and be difficult to see. In the current lighting, the Ruger looks better. One thing I did notice is the U is very perfectly formed and very accurate on the Ruger. It's very perfect. If you go over here to the Smith & Wesson, it's almost like it was painted on on the Monday after uh, New Year's or something like that. It's kind of offset. So this will influence the accuracy of the sight. You may have to adjust the sight to compensate for that. That's kind of just interesting. I would have figured they would have done a better job of the accuracy of that. Now, when you get to the front sights, there is a noticeable difference. If I can get the camera to focus. Okay, now that I got the camera to focus, the Ruger has a very bright, very easy to see fiber optic front sight that is replaceable via drift. And the Smith & Wesson has a black ramp. Now, I know there's a lot of people that like blackout rear sights, but very few people I'm aware of like blackout front sights. The, with it with a bow uh, kind of a faded U at the back and a black front sight basically you're looking at a big black block lined up over the target when you're trying to shoot it made this very difficult to shoot well not that there's a mechanical issue with it both of these I think are mechanically accurate but this one I didn't really have any good reference points at all so this sight would have to be either have a white dot painted on it or be replaced for me to be able to shoot the revolver well this one at least I had a front reference. The U at the back tended to gray out a little bit, so I had a little trouble you know, with that accuracy and all the angles, but I was much closer with less effort with this revolver than I was with the Smith & Wesson. Now, when you get to triggers, that's where they're a little different too, and kind of different in two different ways. So let's start with just pulling the hammer back. So if I pull the hammer back on the two of them, Pulling the hammer back is heavier on the Smith & Wesson. Both are equally smooth. Neither one of them is ridiculously heavy. Both of them are easy to use. Now let's go to the single action trigger. On the Smith & Wesson, if you blink you're going to miss this. That's the entire trigger pull. Very, very short. Very, very light. No take up, no travel. It's just you put your finger on the trigger, give it a little wiggle, and pop it goes. The Ruger also is short, but you're going to see a little bit of travel, and it's just a hair heavier than the Smith & Wesson. Now I'm splitting hairs here. The difference is minute, and probably if you use this trigger today and picked up the other one tomorrow, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. 
or even on live fire at the range, it's kind of harder to tell the difference. But sitting here, doing them back to back in a quiet environment, the Smith & Wesson actually has a slightly better single action trigger. Now let's do double action. Ruger has more travel, but it's very smooth and relatively light. I mean, double action is never going to be super light, but it's actually a pretty light trigger and pretty smooth. When I go to the Smith & Wesson, it's quite heavy. It's much shorter travel, so the distance I have to pull the trigger is probably about half the distance, but it's noticeably heavier with a little bit of stacking right there. So when it comes to double action triggers, even though it's a longer trigger, that much lighter feel and much smoother feel, the Match Champion has a better double action trigger. So if you're going to shoot exclusively single action, Smith & Wesson probably beats the Ruger by a hair. If you're going to shoot a mix, a double and single action, the Ruger trigger is going to win because overall it's smoother and the Smith & Wesson single action doesn't beat it by enough to say that it would take the win. So I would say if I had to choose a trigger, I would choose the Ruger because it's the overall better balance. Both of these revolvers are well machined. They're nice and shiny. They're good looking. Whether you got the rubber grip or the, the wood grip, they both just have a nice presence. These are big, heavy revolvers. They look nice. They're shiny. If I go up to the business end of these, you'll see that the Ruger does have an 11 degree target crown. The 610 does not have a crown. I did not notice any issues with mechanical accuracy on either of these. The accuracy issues I had with these were not the function of the revolver, it was me being able to see the sights well enough to pick the spot on the target I wanted to put a hole in. There's a minor difference between these in price. MSRP is 1239 on the Match Champion. These are hard to find, they don't make very many of them. When they make them, they're gone fast, so expect to pay MSRP or more for that. The 610 is $100 cheaper at $1139, but similar to the Match Champion, they're not all over the place. They are hard to find. When you do find one, you're probably going to pay close to or possibly above MSRP. These revolvers are not the mainstream revolvers. They're not all over the place in every gun store. So you're not talking about getting an inexpensive revolver if you're looking at either one of these. You're kind of more into that rarefied territory. Both of these are predominantly good for range use, potentially handgun hunting, even though neither of these is set up for a scope. So you're using the sights that come with it or whatever sights you put on it. Possibly home defense. Neither one of these is a good concealed carry choice, simply because of the size of them and the weight of them. There's a lot of things out there that are better choices for concealed carry. These will work for concealed carry, and I know there's people that will conceal carry these, but there's probably better choices for that. So then it comes down to, between the two of these, if I were only going to have one of them, which one would I pick? I would definitely pick the Ruger. The trigger overall, when all factors consider, is better on the Ruger, despite the slightly better single action on the Smith & Wesson. And the overall function of it, the function of the cylinder versus the hanging up on this, the fact that even though that rear sight's not the greatest, it at least has a good front sight, and the sights on this are kind of unusable for me. Overall, I think that the choice I would it would make is the Ruger on, in this particular case. But if you're a Smith & Wesson fan and you like the way the Smith & Wessons work, or you've got eyes that you can count the eyelashes that'll fly from 100 feet away, maybe the sights don't matter to you. The Smith & Wesson is probably still a good choice. I just kind of tilt towards the Ruger in this case. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified, comment if you've got something you want to say about one of these revolvers, and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble, we're pretty much everywhere, and thank you.